This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I talk about Gino's East Brewery and then uh, 20 years of Fishman's celebration. It's going to be an epic weekend, so get ready for that. All that more on this week's episode. Yeah, because, you know, you got a court popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I know. How's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Hey, Brad. I'm Nick White. And we're back again. Yeah, Here, boy. drinking some beer, drinking some delicious, tasty canned beer, too, nonetheless. Yeah. If you're new to Chicago Beer Pass, what Nick and I do every week, we get together, talk about the events we made it to this past week, talk about the events coming up this week that we're going to try to go to and that you should check out, and we drink beer. Uh, and this week, we have uh, the Revolution Pills. Yeah, man, the Revolution. Um, one of the largest breweries in town, apparently, according to... Uh Brewers Association's listings last week that we talked really about. Really bigger than Lagunitas? You always forget that Lagunitas is a Chicago brewery, right? Right. Yeah. So no way. Yeah. They're <laughs> definitely not big. Yeah. That place is the same size as Soldier Field. That place is nuts. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. big. This is, uh, this is Rev Pills. This is Chicago Pilsner. Um, I'm, I, for one, am very excited that they're taking a step back from the in-your-face uh, fist like marketing print. yeah for sure because i had ones enough over the weekend and ones enough is like i haven't had ones enough it's like an 11 percent ipa in a okay. six in a in a six pack can it was okay. a massive beer oh but this is um totally different uh layout from than the traditional fist yeah of. this can design is very similar to the uh fist city can yes um it has that gold top the miller miller light gold top yeah and uh i don't know why like what why this has this design and then other beers have the like uh, bright colored fist design. I don't know what's the reason behind one or the other. Yeah, I do like that they're going with like uh, that was a Chicago pale ale. This is a Chicago Pilsner. And yeah, it pays homage to some statue. I know the last one paid homage to the statue from the World's Fair. This one just has a, another lady, a lady on the statue. Not really sure who she's, what she's about. Right, someone's probably listening or watching and being like, it's the such and such statue, you like, idiots. You guys suck. You don't know that? Yeah. You don't know the pill statue? Yeah, it's five and a half percent, all German hops, German malts. I love this beer, man. It's uh, nice, clean, refreshing, you mm-hmm. know? It's got that really cool, creamy colored head. But then the head went away so fast. It D- did, yeah. Dissipates it, quickly. It did have a pretty big head for a Pilsner, which, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have like that huge hop punch in the face or anything. Yeah. Um, hung out a little bit at Rev's Tap Room uh, over the weekend. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, you know, they were on Saturday night, they were calling last call. But um, to my surprise, it wasn't last call. It was just them announcing that they were going to play R. Kelly's Trapped in the Closet. What? <laughs> so you know, it's it's like this musical right, with all like, these fucking chapters, and apparently it goes for like they play like for a half hour. They played R. Kelly on the it's TV. Twelve parts, yeah. Yeah, it was hilarious, man. I'm mm-hmm. like, and then you gotta watch the Weird Al version. Uh, of he's got tra- uh, trapped, trapped in the, the cl- trapped in the drive through. Oh <laughs> it's it's funny, man. And I'm like, what is Rev doing? This is hilarious. Wow. Okay. It, it worked. Though. So it's last call before the trapped in the closet. Right. <laughs> So weird. All right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, pick up these cans if you see them. If you're in the at the store, I think I grabbed these at Whole Foods, so I think they're pretty easily available. Get your hands on them now. This beer is great. I'm gonna open another one. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. Um, so this past week, right. I I don't even know where my week went. I remember us being here drinking, yeah, recording, and then now I'm back here again. That's how. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even make it out anywhere. I don't know what happened to my yeah. week. Uh, how about, I hope you have made it. Otherwise, this is a short episode, and we're out of here. Yeah, we're just gonna <laughs> smash these. We're just gonna start doing. Uh, we're just gonna do shotguns. Yeah, just keep <laughs> just tasting. A, just, just a wrap. <laughs> I went to a couple of events, man. We'll start with uh, Columbus Tap. Right, is a launch party for Columbus Tap, which is a new gastropub concept inside of the Fairmont Hotel Chicago. 
Okay. Is uh, that where you went on Tuesday when you left here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, went downtown uh, over by Millennium Park, right? Yeah. Uh, so Fairmount is, um, you know, it's like a little luxury hotel. I've never been to it, actually. Right. And they had a they had a space in there called the Aria. It was like a little level one restaurant. Uh, they revamped that and turned it into a gastro pub. So they got the chef from like Vancouver who worked at some of their other hotels. Yeah. And then they got this uh, this GM who's a bar manager. Who, um, you know, he's from Chicago, but he spent some time in San Francisco, uh, just like really falling in love with beer and food pairings. And you know, you and I were joking bef- uh, after last night's show, like in the post game, we were like, "Yo, this is gonna be some bullshit. They're just gonna have like the same fifteen brands <laughs> right. you see at all these bars downtown, and it's gonna serve out of frozen mugs, and it's gonna suck." You know? Yeah. And I was totally surprised, man. It went in the exact opposite direction of that. Oh, that's yeah. good to hear. Yeah, so there are some political games they got to play. So you're going to see like Goose Island Pills on tap. But let me let me set it up for you first of all. So they yeah. got a they got a revamped kitchen and uh, 16 drafts online uh, okay. dedicated to the Midwest. Oh, right? nice. Okay. And then um, you know there's obviously like your founders and your goose, but then um, they're debuting with a beer from uh, Aquanaut. Not Aquanaut, but uh, uh, who do we have on the show? Uh, Lake Effect. No, no, no. no? The uh, the beer we were drinking during the Lake Effect episode. Oh, uh, uh, maple Maplewood. Wood. Maplewood. So they have a collab with Maplewood on. Okay. Uh, it's a citrus saison called When Life Gives You Kumquats. So I guess that's some kind of, um, okay. you know, so he's like, yeah, man, we took like, you know, pails of these kumquats over there and we brewed with those guys. Uh, so they got a beer from Aquanaut and Beguile and all these, and uh, Unani. Oh, nice. And okay. like a super small nano Chicago breweries. Haven't heard much from Unani in no. a while. He no. kind of made a lot of noise and then uh, has beers in Costco and... It's kind of you know he's he's around you mm-hmm. know doing his thing. Yeah. So um, this was a really cool concept. He said uh, what they wanted to do was uh, you know since the last concept came about the Aria concept, there's been over like seven thousand condos in that area, right? And you know the hotel is really not that relevant to people who you know over there basically, okay. right? So this was to kind of create a space that didn't feel like it was attached to a hotel that you would have pride in coming to even if you just lived around there. Okay. Or if you worked down there, like I work downtown and you know, you're always looking for somewhere new to go. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. Um really, really cool interpretation on food and then like tons of local beer. And he's even got like verticals in his uh cellar. They got cans. It kinda reminded me just a little bit of uh what like side doors doing. Okay. You know? Just Makes like sense. like a really cool local local focused beer list and a space you wouldn't really expect it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So that was good. That's that was pretty. Good. So what's the address again, or where is it located? Uh, it's in the Fairmont Hotel. The name of the bar is called Columbus Tap. Okay. It's at uh, two hundred North uh, Columbus. Okay. Yeah, two hundred North Columbus. So you feel like it's a, a good spot if you live down there? Would you make your way over there? For sure. Like if you live down there, if you work down there, or there's tons of stuff going on in Millennium Park. Yeah. This is a block north of Millennium Park. Okay. Like if you're down on the Mag Mile for any reason. This uh, fireworks in Navy Pier are walking distance from here. Right. Um, this is a. They're calling that space the uh, the New East Side. Okay. Like you know, east of Michigan and uh, I guess north of Randolph. So how far is it from? Uh, is it Halls and Hoods, right? That yeah. we made it to. Yeah, I'd say. It? I'd say um, maybe like a five six minute walk. Okay. Like not far at all. You can hit up both those easily. Yeah. yeah. And if you're further north, if you're near, um, you know, if you're near Ohio or Chicago Ave, you could start at Side Door. And do a nice little pub crawl, you know, Jake Melnick's, that's got another one, okay. uh, Towson Hood, and then this place. I'd, f- I'd say in that area, over by Magma, those are probably the, the four best beer lists I've seen. Okay. You know? you know what we should do? What's that? Is do <laughs> either a Chicago Beer Pass episode or some other episode where we pub crawl. At least three stops. Yeah. We have a beer, we ask someone why they like the place, yeah. and then move on to the next one. I think that'd be great. Hmm. Especially weather permitting, because you don't want yeah. it to be too hot. And then, like, you know, 55, 60. All right. Maybe we do a series in, in the summer that are pub crawls. I'm in. All right. It's a good idea. I love how the, the this brainstorming session <laughs> yeah. here on Chicago Beer Pass. This is great. Yeah. Uh, we hit up all these spots that we, we talk about, recommend, yeah. and then we see what's happening there. That's true. Yeah. And maybe, yeah, like you said, get the voice of, you know, the people. You know, they've mm-hmm. got, like, folks that just visit. That's, that's their neighborhood bar. Yeah. See what, see what they feel about the place. All right. Yeah. You know? All right, I'm gonna have to check this spot out. I'm interested in what they're doing. Yeah, I was. Um, you, you you dig this place? It's actually very cool. All right, nice. Yeah. Um, so you made it there. That was Tuesday. That was just the basically the start of the week. Yeah, that was the start of the week for sure. And then I made my way over to the uh, the new tasting room over at Benny's, the flagship Benny's by Goose Island. Okay. Uh, Benny's Lincoln Park. 
Yeah. Okay. So for the um, for the Takayo launch party, right? So Takayo is Rick Bayless's new project, right? Okay, so, I've heard of him. Yeah. So <laughs> you know Rick Bayless of the super cool um, goatee. I think. Uh, well, I think Crowley's got a better goatee than Rick Bayless, but Whoa, that little okay. you know. The, or is it Soul Patch? Soul Patch, yeah. yeah. Just got that going. <laughs> and it's like razor sharp. You cracked it. Up. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, but anyway, he's um they were celebrating the fact that their beer, uh Takayo is also the name of the beer. It's this hominy white ale. Uh, you know, it's a Chicago only beer so far and it's in uh, it was in eighty accounts, so now they're moving it to bottles and cans. Okay. So this is kind of a launch party for that, as well as kind of a um, a preview of uh, not a preview, but just like a celebration of his ability to all of a sudden have two breweries. Apparently, right it goes from zero to none. Or zero, <laughs> right. I mean zero. He goes from zero to two. From, from zero, zero to, to two. zero to none is easy. I could do that all the time. Yeah. I, so <laughs> Bayless, man, he's an interesting guy. So the Takayo beer is uh, made with uh, two brothers, mm-hmm. right? And then it's a hominy wheat ale. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of more, I would say, not, it's more like Allagash White than it is Blue Moon. Okay. Right? It's somewhere in between those two beers, right? I mean, it's interesting. And he was kind of saying, like, yeah, we wanted to make an interesting beer that you didn't have to think about, you know, something that went well with food, something that had flavor, but not just kind of overwhelming sensory-wise, you know, kind of okay. easy going. And um, so this is a beer he's, he's launching with uh, his project with uh, Constellation Brands. Which is apparently a separate brewery from Cruz Blanca, which is opening on, um, it's actually opening on Cinco de Mayo in West Loop, like a few blocks from Haymarket, like around the corner from like Girl and the Goat and all that jazz. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this event had uh, tacos. Um, there was no mezcal. There was, there, we thought there'd be mezcal, but there's, there was no mezcal. What? And then the thing about this event, I mean, and it's fine, you know, I get it, you know, Ray, Rick, Bayless has, Rick Bayless has two breweries, right? Um, but this event ran from like, you know, maybe like six to nine and then there's like a hand and there's three three taco options and then you go there and they've got the 10 10 draft lines and then all 10 draft lines are this one beer so i'm like okay. so i went to the bar i'm like hey man that's great you got all these drafts what what all what beers are you guys all making oh well we, we just got the one i'm like you don't need 10 draft lines for that yeah 10 draft lines for one beer right yeah. now and i'm like that's fine some mezcal is gonna roll around you know yeah and then no mezcal so you had the one beer. So you, got this, that. you got the six to nine event <laughs> with the one beer and the, and the three tacos. Ooh, I guess they thought people were going to come and go. like, And I'm sure people did quickly. Like, okay, I had the beer and I ate the tacos. Yeah, I thought it'd be. I'm out. Yeah, I thought it'd have a little more depth just from an event standpoint. I mean, but, you know, but the beer was good. And then I was talking to the Constellation Brands guys. They're based in Chicago, which I didn't know. Okay. And he's like, yeah, you know, we got into, uh, they used to be Crown Imports. They were just an importer, but now they're a brewery because, um, I think because of the Modelo sale, right? Like the Modelo, how did it work? Um, He explained it to me too. Like something about, hey, when they acquired Modelo to make in Mexico, they then had to, um, you know, they basically bought the brewery. Yeah, right? okay. He was kind of explaining how they got this brewery in Mexico that makes you know, like Tecate and a couple other brands, like right. maybe Victoria, all these, you know, some of those more well-known Mexican brands. I had a Tecate, had Big Star the other night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slime and a shot of whiskey. Yeah, well, I had a, a, the Michelada. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> Big Star's Big Star's fun. And we, I like I like Big Star a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Their tacos are not the thing I like the most, though. It's like, you know, yeah, I like the Michelada, and I like the... Uh, yeah, the experience, the experience of the place, of yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, so um, so Rick Bayless launched this week. Yeah, I find it. I mean, and he's not fucking around. He's got two breweries, like uh, Takayo. It sounds like it's going to. Uh, when you talk about Constellation Brands, right? And yeah. you know, you talk about Modelo and Corona. You know, these are worldwide brands. So I'm like, well, are you gonna? Ex- if what happens if this beer gets popular? Are you gonna brew it in Mexico? He's like, we're nowhere near that phase. He said, right now they're just gonna roll it out from two brothers, and, and in their eyes, it's a really small project. But it's it's picking up steam because they're putting it in cans. And oh, bottles. okay, cool. Yeah, so, man, okay, I'm. I feel like there's not that much like hype around this his projects. Like you don't yeah, see a lot of people. Yeah, you don't see a lot around it. I know that. Um, you know, if you dig a little bit, he's got uh the Cruz Blanca guys who um he recruited the head brewer from Goose Island, Clybourne. Yeah. Um, and you know they got a collab on right now with uh with half acre and they've got a collab on with rev but yeah 
It's been kind of a low key situation. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure you see more of it as the closer it gets. Well, shit, the closer it gets, they open on May, what? May 5th. Right. Yeah. Single to Mile. This is happening soon. All right. Yeah. So. Interesting. All right. So that's a one beer, three tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so any- that, that should have been the name of the event. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the name of our episode here, One Beer, Three Tacos. Yeah. I am excited to hear about the, the Cruz Blanca project. I know that, um, you know, uh, what's our guy's name from? Phil Wymore yeah. from Perennial. He came on as a beer consultant. Okay. So he kind of oversaw the uh, the Takayo release, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna be doing some collaborative things with the uh, with the brewmaster over at Cruz Blanca as well. Nice. So, okay. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for what they're offering, and it's gonna be like beer and food focused. Okay. And then you made it to another brewery, right? This week you were just checking out all these new breweries. Yeah, I was rolling, man. It's um. Gino's East, which has been a, it's a Chicago staple, a deep dish pizza. Since 1966, they've been a brew pub at the River North location uh, for about two years now. Mm-hmm. So like, hey, come out. You know, we got some new beers on the draft. Let's just hang out and shoot the shit. So, you know, I went down there. And, um, yeah, I was thoroughly surprised, man. They got these uh, Tim Bell fermenters, and they're cranking out um, quite a bit of beer, man. He was he mentioned that, um, you know, this Gino's East. You know, it's the old Michael Jordan Steakhouse. Yeah. That, which was the old LaSalle Power Company right there on uh, – right near Rock and Roll McDonald's. Right, because the, there was – was it Gino's East? So there was a pizza place across or Kitty Corner. Yes. Or no, that was a Planet Hollywood. Yes. And Planet then Hollywood. it became. It became a Gino's East, and, and then now it's Condos. That's Condos. Yeah. Okay. So Gino's East moved into this other building. Mm-hmm. With, yeah. Yeah, I remember when I had the giant slices of pizza. The, yeah, that was part of the. It was part <laughs> of the building. The building was shaped like really big slices of pizza. Which does pizza does not look good blown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they. I'm glad they got. I'm glad they got that out their system. <laughs> You know, so yeah, so Kevin McMahon is the guy's name. You know, he's a brewmaster there. He spent some time in, uh, you know, at Two Brothers as well as Abita. Yeah. Right? And, you know, we're talking and he's like, yeah, man, you know, I wanted to take on this project. I'm like, well, why are they taking on a beer project? Yeah. And I'm like, man, you know, they wanted to have a more local product. You know, these guys, uh, you know, 1966. Uh, the pizza's been around. He's like, you know, we're getting all these beers from all across the country from our distributor. And he's like, you know, let's let's make beers here the same way we make pizzas here. You know, and not to mention, you know, the the margin is a little bit different when you're making beer versus like buying it. Right. You know? Sure. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. So um yeah, it was a good talk, man. He said uh that that location supplies all the other Geno's East. With beer? Uh, yes. Okay. He said, but they're uh but they're making so much of their top two beers. Uh, I believe one's a uh, lager and the other one might be a pills. I could be wrong there. But anyway, whatever their top two beers are, they're actually um, having Five Rabbit get involved with that beer and um, the guys over at Motor Row to help them with demand. So he's got to focus. Now he focuses on these 10 other beers. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense that those would be his two beers that would be most popular. You want It's a deep dish pizza. Mm-hmm. So you want a lighter not, you know, not refreshing, like easy drinking beer to exactly. go with this. And yeah. you have people from other parts of the country that are coming to Gino's East because it's a Chicago pizza staple. And then, then they're like, oh, I can drink Chicago beer too. Exactly. And they may not be like big craft beer drinkers. So. Right. And I was, I was telling him, I'm like, hey, man, I really dig your beers. But they had like a very, you know, very relaxed approach to your point. Like, you know, his, his, uh, you know, his whip beer, you know, you got some of those really subtle notes of, you know, the orange peel and the grains of paradise, or whatever they put in it, you know, coriander, yeah. you know, you get those flavors. But yeah, he's like, yeah, man, we didn't want high ABV. We didn't necessarily want like overwhelming flavor because of that, okay. because they wanted to profile with their food. So yeah, that was good. Apparently this place has a comedy club upstairs. Which I didn't know. Okay, I've been upstairs or at there. No, I haven't. Oh, so there's upstairs. So I've been at the. Was it the um, English next door mm-hmm. or what used to be next door? Mm-hmm. I've been upstairs there. Okay. Yeah, this place has. Uh, they got room for 120 people downstairs at that bar. But then the upstairs bar, you fit like 250 people in there. Jesus. And then above that is this comedy club. What, I, a third I, floor? Yeah, there's a third floor with a comedy club. Okay. Yeah, I, I had no clue about any of this stuff, man. He told me that um, the Belgian Double was actually, uh, they do a homebrew contest every year, and they get the guys from Chaos involved. 
So what he did was, um, you know, the award-winning recipe for the Belgian double came from the Chaos Homebrew Club. So cheers to those guys. I think they're one of the bigger ones in town. You know, you got Square Kegs, you know, you got Chaos, and then you got Boss down on the south side. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then he's got a bunch of awards on the wall from, like, the uh, <clears throat> the U.S. Championships of Beer. Yeah. I really dug his black IPA. And uh, he was he was talking about how he really enjoyed the flavor, but he couldn't get the hops the way he wanted on the aroma. Oh, but okay. I thought I thought a lot of his beers were solid, man. I I would say definitely check this place out for for beers and get the flight. Oh, nice. You know? Okay. Yeah. I'll so. have to look into that. I haven't I haven't had Gino's East in a long time. I think since uh, uh when my like cousins got married, he had like a a pre you know meet and greet at Gino's East. So yeah. that was the last time. That was. Maybe like five years ago. Yeah, he said there's a, a location uh, Gino's opening up in uh, in Pilsen. And the funny thing is, he said they have a Gino's East in Mexico, like Mexico City. Well, okay. and the Mexico City uh, Gino's, you know, obviously takes on a lot of the local, you know, ingredients and you know traditions. He said a lot of those traditions from that store. He basically said it's going to be the same store in Mexico City that you'll see in Pilsen. Oh neat! And he's supplying beer to all of them, so he's rolling. He's got a podcast too. Oh, he does. Yeah. Well, about what? Um, Pizza uh, and beer? No. Oh. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm like he's got a podcast of like you know, uh, culture, music, and beer. He said uh, you know he's gotten like uh, he said Justin's been on his show and uh, he's got an interview with Jared Rubin. Why aren't we? We should be on a show. We should do like, a collab episode. Yeah, man, we gotta do a clash of the worlds here, man. We gotta be on a show. Let's make this. Let's make this happen. So we we need to work on that. All yeah. right, you got us. You got us card then. We'll Ooh. make this up. We'll, Combine efforts here and make a awesome pizza, special pizza and <laughs> record. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. And then he's got um. So he did 440 barrels last year, which actually, you know, for him, his first year out was 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 decent. You know, mm -hmm. um, they got 11 handles that they're making in house, and um, yeah, they uh, seven locations, and uh, the Eduardo's natural pizza is under the Gino's umbrella, which oh, I didn't it is. Know. I didn't know. Oh, that. Mosaic uh, pineapple imposter. Is the beer that I really dug the most. Nice. They okay. call it pineapple and pineapple imposter because it's all citra hops or mosaic hops. Right. So it's yeah. the pineapple citrus tropical fruit taste, but yeah, not nice. Yeah. yeah. So great time, man. Great time out there. That sounds pretty good. Did yeah. you do anything else, or was that that's pretty good, uh, yeah, especially that's... compared to my nothing? Well, no, I watched. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just watched Trapped in the Closet at uh, <laughs> at Rev yeah. Kenzie. You know, and yeah, that it was stuck it. with you. <laughs> Hilarious, man. I actually teared a little bit when it ended. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, man, I got to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. All right. Well, that's a, a pretty good week then. I think uh, I've definitely got to check out a couple of these places you mentioned. So, And as should everyone else who's listening. It sounds like a fun time. Should we jump into this uh, coming week and what we got on the calendar? Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. All right. So I had some events for Saturday and Sunday I came across. Anything okay. before that? Saturday and Sunday? Yeah. yeah. Um, we got a couple of, we got an event on Friday. Okay. It actually runs on Friday and Saturday. The Pilsner Urkel Unpasteurized Unfiltered Tapping. Okay. So, um, is that Patty Long's? Yeah, it's at Patty Long's. And then it's also going to be at uh, Fat Cat, uh, which is in Uptown. And then it's going to be at uh, Bangers and Lace. Yeah. So the, uh, the brewmaster is going to be there. And, you know, what they do is uh, they fly this over from, uh, from the Czech Republic. And uh, it's a completely different ball game from the the Pilsner Kell that you find just on the shelf. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, like it's a Pils, but it almost looks like a wheat ale. It's cloudy. It's got this really thick head, and it's got like a, a really a really big body. Okay. It's great, man. That's a great beer. So you can go to any of these three places on Friday or Saturday and get it, or no? You actually go to um you go to Patty Long's. And bangers and lace Friday, and then Saturday at Fat Cat, okay. all around the same time, like six p.m. tappings. Okay, yeah. well, bangers and lace is right by my house, so I may stop in yeah. on my way home from work to, you know, grab a pilsner for sure. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting to see how it'd be completely different from what you're used to having. Yeah, I think if I'm if I'm I'm gonna try to like find a four pack of the regular before I go, mm -hmm. and then maybe just like. Try them both. Yeah. I mean, I, I won't bring it in from wherever, you know, from a bag. It'd be bag, neat but. if they had it there at those bars and be like, this is what we're usually serving, yeah. and this is, like, what it is, like, a day old kind of thing. No, I think that would be. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Come on, guys. Get on. I'm full of ideas today. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Friday and Saturday. Yes. Uh, also, 
Saturday is the second anniversary party and bottle release for Hailstorm Brewery. I cannot believe this brewery is already celebrating their second anniversary. Down in uh, Tinley Park, right? Yeah, they're on Tinley Park. Uh, so Saturday, April 16th, uh, is their second, and they'll release it's their Brett Saison with uh, black currants. Okay. And so it's $15 a bottle and a four bottle limit, cash only. And then they're going to have a big, uh, a big tap list with a bunch of guest beers as well. So I'll be. I'll be pretty close to this because I think I'm going to the Chicago Fire game on Saturday, but we're taking like the bus out there, so I don't think I can get them to take us over to Tinley Park as well. Yeah, I heard they party down at those fire games. Yeah, yeah, like they score a goal and like confetti flies everywhere. Strangers are, like hugging and kissing each other. Like, <laughs> it's just a party. Oh, yikes! Okay, <laughs> so that's Saturday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. So it's a long party. Yeah. Um, also out in the suburbs, uh, at Plank Road. Uh, this is in Elgin, so yeah. it's a it's a little bit of a hike for anyone that's making it from the city. Like, you, there's no easy way to get there. Yeah. Uh, but this is the three year Stone Brewing IRS audit. So taxes are due mm-hmm. here in about a week, and so Plank Road is celebrating with th- a three year mm-hmm. vertical of Stone's Imperial Russian Stout. I was wondering where you were going with this. I'm like, why? What is Stone doing with taxes? What IRS. Yeah, Stone's, Stone's going to pay all your taxes <laughs> if you come drink their beer. That's some deep pockets <laughs> over in, uh, at Stone. So they'll be offering the 2014, 2015, and 2016 on tap, mm-hmm. um, as well as uh, food will be available. And yeah, it should be a, a pretty good time if you're anywhere near Plank Road or looking to check them out. It's a super cool spot. Like an old trading post in oh, Elgin there. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what's going on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Sunday, there's a couple of fun events. One's over at the Revolution Tap Room. Right on. You know, might be able to watch Trapped in the Closet. <laughs> I don't know. Like the next the next, like 10 through 20. I think we watched 1 through 10, 11 through 20. I think that's it right now. Oh, man. I don't think until he puts out more. He's leaving me on the edge of my seat here. I need to know what happens with the rest I'm of sure this. There's, I'm sure there's more <laughs> planned. Uh, so this is the Revolution Craft Show. And so this is April 16th from noon to 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, join Revolution Craft Show held at the Revolution Tap Room. Uh, we'll showcase handcrafted goods from 40 artists. The show is free to enter and provides a, you know, a new, unique mix of Revolution beer and food trucks. I bet you have to pay for the beer and food trucks, yeah. but you can buy some like you know knitted hats for your cat. There you go. Things like that. <laughs> Little sweater for the doggy there. Yeah. Um, and then also Saturday, Sunday is 20 years of Fishman's. Man. What? One of the original, uh, one of the, you know, one of the last slashies around probably, right? Definitely the coolest slashie. Like how many okay. slashies did you go to? Uh, um, there's not that many. There's that one by uh, uh, by the whiskey bar and the Chicken play uh, Crown Crown Liquors that one that's the one I'm thinking of. Okay, that's uh, that's like you know like Milwaukee and Campbell. No, the, yeah, and diversity. Yeah, that one. Um, and then there's one here on Roscoe that I randomly like walked by. I was like, can I buy beer? It looks like I can just buy beer and drink here. Yeah. Like sometimes you see them, and I think there's a lot of slashies you don't even know are slashies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Fishman's man, they've been doing craft beer events for. A long time now. Yeah, they've got their own food truck now. They, um, yeah, Kegs for Kidneys is a big event. Uh, Chicago Tap Takeovers. Yeah, uh, a, a big focus on local beer events at Fishman's. Right. Um, so they'll have 20 breweries, uh, exclusive mix of t- craft breweries, craft beers from 20 different breweries, two beers being tapped every hour. So this is from uh, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So this is crazy all-day event, two beers every hour. I don't even – you're just going to show up, and there's going to be something new on tap. Yeah. Uh, they had this Stone Brewing uh, Christmas beer. It's this uh, – Stone cho- makes a Christmas Choco beer? Choco Charid. That's pretty – it's pretty tasty. Yeah? I've seen this before. I've had this in bottle, huh. and it was – Pretty good. Is it a Christmas beer? Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Yeah, this is their mocha stout mm. with coffee and spices. Very good. Uh, so check this out on Sunday. A lot of pretty, like, 
I don't know, like anniversary epic events happening this weekend. It's kind of kind of fun. That's cool, man. Yeah. Cheers to those guys at Fishman's, man. Good program over there. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I have. Anything yeah. else you saw this coming week? No. I think that's it. All right. Well, we usually close out here with some beer news. Yeah, let's get into it, man. Uh, the good folks at Bader Brow, they announced a uh, opening date. They're going to open on Memorial Day. Okay. And they're going to open with a block party. Oh. Yeah, so they're taking over the whole block there. Uh, Bader Brow's got a brand new brewery right in South Loop. So you're talking 25th and Wabash in that area. Yeah, um, I saw that Goose Island is open in a Canadian brewery. Did you hear this? Not surprising. Yeah, uh, Goose First Island. First of many. Yeah, right? Yeah, you did call this. Yeah, I was like, no, they're not going to do that. I mean, Goose Island pubs across the country. Yeah, this is a Goose Island pub that's going to open up in Toronto, Canada. Uh, sometime next year, there was no date specified or even location for that matter, but they just announced, hey, and when it goes down, it'll go down here in Canada. Um we were looking at the uh, White Sox versus the Chicago Cubs. You know, baseball season's in effect in Chicago. Right. And we are talking about the contract.